The first massive computer virus attack the world had to face happened on November 2, 1988. That day, 6,000 research network nodes joining U.S. universities unexpectedly got out of control at once. The computers were attacked by the so-called Morris Worm, a program written by a postgraduate of Computing Science Department. The epidemic had already been stopped by the evening, but the restoration of all systems required almost five days, and the damage, according to the different estimates, amounted to 10 to 100 million dollars. Those years, users became victims of malware mostly because they had no idea of the magnitude of the threat and gave little thought to safety of their computers. Today, everything is different. Almost each computer has an antivirus, and their creation became a large industry. Kaspersky Lab is among the leaders. Today, Kaspersky Lab is the company of tens of thousands of partners all over the world, has 250 million users, and is one of the four in the world rating of antivirus software companies. Last year, the company's global sales amounted to $612 million. Global Company is a major international entity which views the world market as a single whole. The company produces a standard product or service, taking into account minimum specifics of national markets. Eugene Kaspersky would not have been likely to get universal fame if not for the attack of his computer in 89. The virus was detected by an antivirus program I was already using by that time. I'd heard about bad viruses that attacked computers. That's why I had the program which found that virus for me. I only knew it was a virus because the program told me, Genia, this computer is infected. This was the event that made the graduate of the Cryptography, Communication and Computing Science Institute write his first computer antidote. Each virus has its own DNA, its own operating algorithm. I wondered, if this algorithm is reversed, set in a backwards direction, the infected file is likely to be cured. I wanted to try this, so I wrote a simple program reversing a virus algorithm. That was it. The file was cured. At first, creation of such programs for Kaspersky was only an interesting and fascinating pastime. Computer viruses were rare and were written mostly out of interest. Few experts collected them as stamp collectors collect rare stamps. I once knew a real virus writer. He was a particularly nice and gentle man. But when he came face to face with computer defense, it rattled him. It seemed he became completely obsessed. He started to hit back with such strength that I really can't think of anything that would have been able to stop him. But in the course of time, the ideas of virus writers grew more intricate. Malware code spoiled programs and valuable data. Security systems were hacked not only out of leisure interest, but to get money. When something gets into your computer, it can infect the files, steal information, block the computer, and even use it to send spam. Cybercriminals have developed a great many ways to harm your computers. In 91, there were just few specialists who realized what the malware threat was. Eugen Kaspersky at the time worked for Kamai company which sold computers, and in this regard organized an antivirus team to protect the computers from undesirable attacks. I didn't realize then that it would be a multi-billion dollar business. I simply understood that it was serious. It was for some time, and it was interesting. Thus, creation of AVP antivirus, which in a few years would be deemed one of the best in the world, began. With that idea, Kaspersky encouraged his old friends. Alexei de Mondarek also became a member of the team. He and Eugene had known each other since childhood and had studied together. I remember that year when we started to work together on our first computer goals. That was a year when all we had to live on was one big turkey. We'd bought it in November. That was enough for us to eat, for our children, until spring. There was no other food. But somehow we took it as normal. 
Первая версия антивируса Касперского увидела свет в 90-х. The first version of Kaspersky antivirus saw the light in 91. It combined a malware database and a program which searched for infected files and then cured them or deleted. But the programmers could hardly dream of getting commercial profit of the product. Kaspersky team was held by mere enthusiasm until 1994. We were the first who showed the best results in Hamburg University tests. The goal I'd set for my men to make the best global antivirus was achieved. Right then we started receiving calls and letters from European companies, then American companies. They were offering to distribute the product. Of course, that wasn't a normal business approach. Now we wouldn't even talk to such people. We would say, you want to work with us? Yes, please, but you'll be, say, third-level partners or something like that. But then we were happy. Thus, partnership network, which today sells Kaspersky lab products all over the world, from Chile to New Zealand, began to form. One of our partners said, Genia, the way you behave with your partners is impractical. They'll deceive you. You can't control them in any way. My answer was, first, we have no resources to control them, and second, well, let them steal, but promote the brand. That very time, the company employed Natalia Kaspersky. She was the first person who tried to arrange sales of antivirus programs properly. Today, Natalia recalls with irony a time when she knew neither basic marketing nor English and was confounded by any foreign call. All of these weak points were, to some extent, compensated by the fact that the market was so underdeveloped. It was fresh. The antivirus market itself had just started to form, both abroad and in Russia. The software market as such didn't exist in Russia. It wasn't common at all to buy software. The idea of separating from Kamai and establishing their own company belonged to Natalia Kaspersky in particular. The idea for separation and independence was mostly promoted by Natalia Kaspersky. It was really great. She did an amazing job to arrange all that. Kaspersky Lab was founded in 1997. A great achievement was that Natalia Kaspersky convinced Boris Nurgaliev, CEO of 1C, to sell the AVP antivirus via a strong partnership network of the company. Sales were also promoted in parallel via foreign business partners. From the very beginning we took a gamble with our partners. In 1995 I'd already realized that and we started moving towards partnership sales, excluding direct sales step by step. Now we don't offer them at all. Everything goes through our partners. And now Kaspersky Lab has almost 40,000 partners worldwide, ensuring the company's stability, viability and growth. I believe that nearly all existing niches in the information technology market already have their obvious leaders, and their processes for changing can be rather conservative. It's very hard to become a market leader. But once you have, it takes something really dreadful to lose that position of leadership. That's why I have such a high opinion of the Kaspersky Lab. A great company which created great technology. Wonderful people, very reasonable, with the right business model, focused not only on technology, not just on the product. There are many examples when the best products can be lost due to the wrong choice of business model or marketing strategy being made. I think that the lab is sure to stay among the leaders, especially as they are now moving in the right direction to achieve and maintain the leadership they've established. One of the cornerstones of Kaspersky Lab business is licensing of the company's technologies. Everything began in 97 when the company sold the rights to its antivirus engine to finish eSecure. We'd hit the jackpot. We were terribly lucky that we found the Finns and that the Finns had found us. We managed not only to agree over the licensing of our technologies, but also at the end of 97 when we'd got into a financial hole for a variety of reasons. I went to Helsinki and agreed with the Finns that they would pay us in advance. That enabled the young company to survive that first year. These agreements enabled Kaspersky Lab to get big for the time dividends, maintain a team of 12 programmers and invest money into development of the antivirus program.
It was a very profitable business. You sell a license once, make a few add-ons, so there's a lot of work in the initial stage. But then you just sit back and make money. In the new millennium, the company became a leader of antivirus technological race. The AVP package was renamed into Kaspersky Antivirus, which started being sold via supermarket chain in the US and Europe. Kaspersky Lab provides services mainly to private users and small businesses yet, but starts aiming at large companies as well. There is still a large market segment, major businesses, where our share is quite small. And this requires both some product adaptation and rearrangement of infrastructure, the infrastructure of sales and the infrastructure of support. This requires the development of new channels, as our present partnership network is mostly efficient but was created for the sale of products to home users and SMB customers. Today, Kaspersky Lab has more than 2,000 professionals. One of its key units is a powerful team of virus analysts. There are people who analyze new malware and renew the antivirus database. Antivirus programs of Kaspersky Lab protect hundreds of millions of users from harmful software. For his achievements in protection of computer information, Eugen Kaspersky was awarded Russian state prize. The antivirus industry has largely always been a competition of sword and shield. It was on the edge of war. That's why statements like, you write viruses yourself, seem particularly funny. When there is a war, the confrontation is so great that the idea is strange. We really do consider ourselves people who save the world every day, because the enemy really is very powerful. Thank you.